Church. Online. Welcome to Pleasant Grove. UMC. Uh, my name is Ben. I'm Izzy. And type your name in the comments down below so that we can all say good morning to each other. Welcome to church this Sunday. Let us pray. God, we come to you today as a new school year is about to begin. And Lord, we lift up the teachers, the school bus drivers, the administrators who have never ever experienced a school year like this before, as they are busy trying to provide and prepare for our precious children. We pray for wisdom for them, for strength and peace, Lord. Uh, we pray for all of the children who will be learning either virtually or in person, that you would keep them safe, Lord, that you would help them to find opportunities to laugh and to connect and to experience the innocence of childhood that they so rightly deserve. Um, God, I pray that you would be with parents for whom there have been no easy answers and no easy choices. Parents who are serving as learning coaches or parents that are sending their kids off on that school bus, I just pray, Lord, that you would give them peace and wisdom to know how to best support their children and the education system at this time. Um, Lord, this is a year that we never could have anticipated, and yet you knew it was coming, and you are here with us every step of the way. May we lean into you in good times and in bad and draw closer to you and to each other instead of um, feeling divided from those that you have called us to love and serve. We ask all of these things in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together as one family, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
just as you are before your God. Come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you. Hear now a reading from Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning and welcome back to Pleasant Grove United Methodist Church. Today I'm finishing up uh, my initial sermon series entitled Getting to Know Your New Pastor. I've been sharing with you some of my faith events and what has formed and shaped me as your pastor. You get to know a little bit about my heart and my life and my calling. And today I'm going to wrap that part up about me. But next week, my lovely wife, the Reverend Rachel Gilmore, is going to come and share with you, uh, preach uh, for you, and share with you a little bit about one of her uh, faith experiences in her life so that you get to know your new pastor spouse, the Reverend Rachel Gilmore, who is the Director of Recruiting, Assessing, and Training of all U uh, United Methodist Church Planners out of, for all United Methodism worldwide uh, here at Discipleship Ministries in Nashville for Path One. And so she is an amazing preacher, uh, an amazing person, and I know you're going to love her and know uh, be really blessed to hear a little bit more about her her life and her life experience with uh, our uh, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But today I want to wrap things up. I started off by sharing with you my call story. Uh, then I moved to, uh, or I shared with you, started my salvation experience, and I moved to my call story. And today I want to share with you what happened to me as I started pursuing my call into ministry. At this point in my life, I finished my engineering degree from Shawnee State University in Southern Ohio. I left home at about 22 years old and went to Asbury College. Today, it's called Asbury University. It's there in uh, central Kentucky, uh, just south of Lexington. And I pursued a, a bachelor's in Bible theology. And so here I was, uh, the year that I graduated college, starting back over again, following my call into ministry. And as I started going to Asbury, uh, I was super excited, but that excitement, just like everything that you do that is new, once you get into the routine and the rhythm, it becomes that, routine and rhythm. And when it started doing that, I, uh, I started kind of questioning, you know, did, did God really call me to do this? Do I really want to start college all over again? 
I'm in the same classes as, as freshmen are. I finished my degree. And here I am taking intro lessons, doing the same things that people four and five years younger than me are doing. Being away from home in a new and strange place with different people, different experiences, I started doubting. You know, also at this time in, in my life, I also I had been reading the Bible. I, as soon as I became a Christian, I started reading. And by this time in my life, I'd read the Bible uh, two times over uh, at least. And, and as I read, I don't know if you've done this, but as I read the Bible, it seems like people who are following God, who are called by God, the prophets and, and the priests and all of that, they, they, they hear God's voice directing them. You know, whom shall I send? Go and tell the people, thus saith the Lord, again and again and again, we see as if God is directly talking to God's prophets, directing them, fulfilling those promises. Hey, I'm going to always be with you. I'm never going to leave you or forsake you. I will be a light unto your path. I will guide your every step. And as I started being filled with doubt, started questioning my call, I started wondering if this is something that I really want to do and start all over again. I found out that God didn't have that clear voice saying, Brandon, you're on the right path. Brandon, do this. Go here and do that. And what happened for me is I started being filled with doubt and frustration, and even anger, wondering, is this what God really wants me to do, or did I just get caught up into the emotions of faith and just make this all up myself? And at one night, at, there at Asbury, uh, very early on, I was so upset, so frustrated, and so fed up with this journey that I packed a bag got into my truck, and when I went to turn the key, nothing happened. And as I shined the flashlight, I realized that I wasn't going to go anywhere that night. And the next day, as I processed everything, I said, okay, let's just stick it out. Let's make it the fall break. And so as fall break came, I, I went back home, first time I went back home uh, since then, and I went to the church, the, the church where actually my mom and dad got married in, the church I was baptized in, uh, the church uh, I went to vacation Bible school, the church I started going back to church when I gave my life to Jesus Christ, and I was there in the Sunday school uh, class, uh, and I shared with the, the, the Sunday school teacher, the Sunday school superintendent, the one who uh, challenged me to teach Sunday school when I became a Christian and started going back to church, the, the same person who uh, challenged me to be the liturgist and go and open up church every day and the person who um, just I knew that it was in my corner and had prayed for me and I was talking to her Carolyn and I said Carolyn I, 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 I'm really struggling I don't know if it's something I'm going to do I just I, I don't feel God anymore I don't I don't hear I'm just really confused and I'm just ready to give up and she goes Brandon don't don't give up. You know, your mom came to me one time before you were a Christian and said, please pray for Ben. He's, he's really in a, in a bad place, and I was. And she goes, that night I started praying for you, and God gave me a verse. And in this verse out of the Bible, God, that I was reading as if God was telling me that it, the Spirit of God's going to be upon you. He's going he's to anoint you, and, and you're going to do something amazing, that you're going to be like, the, like, like, a, like a tree, like an, like an oak tree. Um, that's how, what God's going to do. That's that verse that, that God gave me. I don't know. I can't remember what it was, but that was it. And I looked at Carolyn dumbfounded. Like I couldn't believe what I was hearing. She looked back at me like, what, what did I say? You see, at Asbury, every year that freshman class, they, they get a class verse, class verses. It's a verse that kind of guides them and directs them and, and helps form and, and shape them their four years there at, at college to give them hope and guidance. And that verse is 
verses are the ones that we read. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to preach good news, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives. And you will be a planting like trees, like oaks of righteousness, a planting for the display of the Lord's splendor. As soon as Carolyn described those verses that God gave her, I turned my Bible to Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. And I said, Carolyn, these are the verses God gave you that night. Tears, goosebumps, the whole Sunday school class, we were crying and, and hugging each other because Carolyn said, yes, these are the verses that describe what God wants to do through you, Brandon. You are called. So go back and be a preacher the way God has called you to be. There are some things that I've, I've learned through this experience over the years. The major thing that I take away is in that moment, the church was being the church. They, in my doubt, in my frustration, in my haziness, in my difficult times, in the times where I was ready to run away, they gathered around me. They reassured me. They were praying for me. They hugged me. They encouraged me. They gave me the confidence and the strength and the surety to go back and to handle, to, to face all of my doubt and confusion and frustrations with this new experience, with this new life of being called by God to be His messenger. They, through their love and encouragement and presence, them being the church, helped me. Now, these verses from Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, they were just like these verses in, uh, that we read last week from chapter 53. These verses would have been very uh, poignant, uh, very inspirational to those um, to the Hebrews who are in captivity in Babylon, where they are cut off from their home, where they're cut off from the temple, the temple has been destroyed, where they're cut off to everything familiar and they're there being slaves, being servants, being persecuted for this, that, and the other thing just by being Jewish. And they were wondering, like, how long do they have to cry out to God? How long are they going to face the consequences of their own rebellions and sins that they committed? And God is sending them messenger after messenger, hope after hope, message after message in and through this prophet Isaiah. And, prophet, and the Isaiah, prophet Isaiah here in chapter 61 says, you know, there's going to be somebody that the Spirit of the Lord is going to be upon him. God is going to be doing something new in and through this person. And they're going to be there proclaiming release to the captives, freedom, healing. And they are going to be there in their life, in their ministry, who they are, everything about them is going to reflect the splendor of God. They're going to be strong in their faith. They're going to do, they're going to answer the call that God has given them. They're going to allow the anointing of the Holy Spirit to fill them and guide their life. And they will show the nations just how great and glorious God is. This was the original message. This was meant to give people hope that God's going to send leaders into their darkness, doubt, frustration, and even anger to give them hope and to build them up so mighty that they're going to be like these big oak trees displaying God's splendor. Now fast forward a few thousand years and Jesus picks these same verses up in his sermon to his hometown, to his home synagogue. And he gets up in this dramatic fashion and he opens the scrolls. And as he's doing that, everybody's going, whoa, what's Jesus doing? Hey, isn't this Joe's son? 
You know, Joe's a carpenter. Joe doesn't know how to read. He shouldn't know how to read. And here's his son. He should only know how to make furniture and work with wood. He's a carpenter's son. What is he doing? Opening the scrolls and going right, right to the point. You know, no, only rabbis, only very educated people do that. And here is this carpenter's son that everybody thought was illegitimate and illiterate. And he opens up the scrolls and he reads them for everybody. And people are amazed. And he essentially says, these things are fulfilled in me. And people are like, whoa. Then he starts unpacking things. And he says, you know, God's called me not to minister to the healthy. God hasn't called me to take this message to people here in the church, here in the synagogue, who already know him, who are in no need of a physician or, or help, but, but the Spirit told me to go, go out there, to go out to those who are hurting, who are sick, who don't know God. So I leave you all with this question. Who do you want to be as a person of faith? You want to be one who just consumes and is in church just to get what you want out of it? Are you the person who is willing to say, here I am, Lord? Send me, use me, pour out your Holy Spirit, anoint me with your Spirit to do your work so that one day I can share with others the peace, the love, the wholeness, and the healing that I have in here that's offered to them. Are you willing to go to those who don't know Christ? to serve in the church and to go and to minister to those who are hopeless, full of confusion and darkness, who are sick and need the healing balm that we have and the knowledge and the salvation of Jesus Christ our Lord. May God fill us full of His anointing and send us out so that we all will be these oaks of righteousness, displaying the splendor of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. has flown, I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away, when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away.
just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away to a land where joy shall never end. Hope you enjoyed the service. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Have a have a blessed day. Bye.